Hi, Mel here, and today I'm taking you along with me as I visit the incredible Qasr al Sarab Desert Resort. This luxury resort is located within the world's largest uninterrupted sand desert, commonly known as the Empty Quarter. The name Qasr al Sarab means Palace of Mirage. And what a perfect name that is for this sprawling sand castle that seems to appear out of nowhere in the middle of a vast sea of sand. I first learned about the resort from the BBC documentary, Amazing Hotels, Life Beyond the Lobby. The episode that featured the resort presented a fascinating look into how they were able to construct and run this luxury resort in the middle of a barren desert, far from any infrastructure. I found everything I learned about this place to be very intriguing, and I knew that it was something I just had to experience for myself. So when I found myself in the United Arab Emirates for a week, I put a stay at the Qasr al Sarab Desert Resort at the very top of my list. If you're interested in getting an inside look at my room, the resort grounds, the food, the pool, and the activities offered at the Qasr al Sarab Resort, I hope you'll come along with me today. Qasr al Sarab Desert Resort is located in the empty quarter region of the United Arab Emirates. Most people get there by flying into Abu Dhabi. The resort is south of Abu Dhabi, very close to the Saudi Arabian border. And the drive there takes approximately two and a half hours. The journey through the desert is desolate, peaceful, and most of all, beautiful. If the red sand landscapes look familiar, it might be because many of the scenes from Dune were actually filmed there. In fact, the Qasr al Sarab resort itself was one of the filming locations. The resort was actually closed to the public during production and used exclusively for the movie's cast and crew. After quite a bit of driving, I finally spotted the resort's two large entrance stations on either side of the road. And once I reached the entrance bridge, I saw what looks like a giant sand castle in the middle of the desert. I got out of the car crossed through the courtyard and entered the lobby where I was immediately met and ushered into the next room. I was seated and presented with a tray that offered a cool washcloth, a refreshing drink, two dates, and some Arabic coffee. I enjoyed the snack while the check-in process was being completed for me, and before I knew it, I was being escorted to my room. On the walk to my room, we traveled through covered walkways. I couldn't help but notice the effect created by the fortress-like thick walls and the wooden roofs. I was also surprised to see nature truly thriving in the middle of the desert. Trees, green ground covering, and colorful flowers lined the path. I had booked the deluxe garden room, but was happy to find out at check-in that I had been upgraded to the deluxe balcony room. So to reach my room, we took a small flight of steps up.
Upon entering the room, I instantly saw that the design aesthetic of the common areas continued in the guest room. I love the color palette and appreciate the mix of marble, dark woods, and intricate lighting fixtures. It's beautiful and yet relaxing at the same time. But what I loved even more was the view from the balcony. Looking down at the crystal blue pool and the lush vegetation surrounded by nothing but miles and miles of sand dunes, this place feels like the definition of an oasis. It was not easy to tear myself away from the view, but I still needed to check out the rest of the room. The bathroom entrance was straight across the room from the balcony. And the first thing I noticed was the giant soaking tub. There's a double sink bathroom vanity with interesting lights. And while the bathroom isn't fancy, I really liked the color palette, big wooden doors, and the relaxed vibe. Across from the vanity are two frosted doors. Behind one door is the toilet and bidet. And behind the other is a very generously sized shower. Back in the room is a large closet with wooden doors that provides plenty of hangers as well as bathrobes and slippers. And then there's a little more storage space in the entertainment cabinet. A few drawers, coffee and tea supplies, and a mini fridge. Guests can experience a number of unique experiences at Qasar al Sarab. For the vast majority of the options, you need to reserve a spot and pay a fee. While I felt like the prices were a bit high, I also recognize that because you're in such a unique setting, it makes sense to take advantage of the opportunities they offer because it's a bit of a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I decided on two different paid activities. First was the Falcon and Saluki show, which I booked for the afternoon of my first day. Guests who are scheduled for an activity go to the main building to meet up with the guides. We were then driven about 10 minutes away to a deserted spot in the desert. Seats had been set up along with stands holding a number of large birds of prey. We were offered mint tea or Arabic coffee, as well as dates to enjoy, while the trainers filled us in on the history and tradition of both the Falcons and the Saluki. They are incredibly expensive to purchase and are treated very well and protected. Prices can run as high as $250,000. They had the Falcons fly and dive for their dinner, and then we were actually allowed to interact with them. They allowed us to be part of the show, and it was pretty amazing to be able to handle these beautiful creatures. Nice. Aww.
We were also invited to hold an owl and pet the Saluki. And then we watched as the Saluki raced for their dinner. And honestly, the speed they could run was incredible. The experience lasted a couple of hours and then we were treated to a beautiful sunset before returning back to the resort. Because Qasar al Sarab is hours away from civilization, all of your meals must be taken at the resort. Luckily, there are several very different experiences you can choose from. The most unique dining option is Al Falaj, a Bedouin style outdoor dinner set under the stars. This meal consists of traditional Arabic favorites such as meza, kofta, grilled prawns, vegetables lamb cooked for hours under coals, mint tea, and Arabic sweets. This was the dinner I really wanted to try, but unfortunately it was closed the night I stayed. So instead I opted for Suhail, the resort's most upscale restaurant. The restaurant offers both inside dining and rooftop dining. I sat inside and unfortunately I wasn't able to take photos or video of my meal because the dining room was only dimly lit and the atmosphere didn't seem conducive to recording or taking pictures. But here's a look at the menu to give you an idea of what they offer. The food was good and well presented, but honestly, not quite the fine dining experience I expected given the very hefty prices. If you're looking for a more relaxed setting, Gadir, which is located next to the pool area, offers global cuisine in a more relaxed setting. For an even more casual experience, try Al Lawan, an all-day lounge in the lobby, or the Nassim Bar near the pool. Or, at the opposite end of the spectrum, you could consider splurging on a private outdoor dining experience, or a private desert barbecue. While dinner didn't quite meet my expectations, the quality of the breakfast the next morning made up for it. Breakfast is served at the Al Waha restaurant, which offers both buffet and a la carte service. The restaurant is on the bottom floor of the main building. After being seated, I took a look at the menu. It has a lot to offer, especially considering how large and diverse the buffet is. I ordered the classic Eggs Benedict. While waiting for it, I grabbed some fresh fruit and enjoyed it along with my cappuccino. I also took the opportunity to check out everything the buffet had to offer. I was seriously impressed with the offerings, both in terms of the variety offered and the quality. After my slightly disappointing meal the night before, Qasar al Sarab definitely redeemed themselves with their breakfast. By the time I finished eating, it was time to meet up with the guide for my next activity, a desert drive. The activity started with a gentle drive away from the resort and towards a more secluded area with big sand dunes. The driver provided some very interesting information about the history and geography of the area. He also asked us how intense we wanted the drive to be. Thankfully, we all agreed that we were up for actual dune bashing, so that's what we did. 
There was another truck out with us, so we alternated between dune bashing ourselves and watching the other vehicle. It was actually a lot of fun to have both perspectives and the two hours really flew by. If you're in the mood for something more relaxing, the resort offers a beautiful large pool with plenty of shade and seating options both in the water and poolside. Service is great and you can order drinks and food any time of the day. It was also surprisingly uncrowded when I was there. I was at the resort during the busy season and was surprised that I was almost completely alone both times I went to the pool. And if it ever does get crowded, the resort also offers a smaller, adults-only infinity pool. One thing I kept noticing was how lush, green, and beautiful the grounds of the resort are. I read that water travels through 124 miles of pipe to reach the resort. So you can't help but appreciate how much effort goes into keeping all the greenery and flowers alive and thriving. But if you go past the well manicured grounds, you're faced with even more beauty in the vastness of the surrounding desert. In my opinion, this is why you travel all the way here. The only thing in front of you are the enormous sand dunes. So majestic and yet also so fragile, ready to change shape whenever the wind blows. I felt like there were miles and miles of sand dunes that were calling me, and the peace and tranquility I felt there was really nothing I've ever experienced before. It's something I'll remember forever. While I wanted to stay out there longer, the time unfortunately came when I had to check out and head to my next stop. On my way, I thought over my experience. Other than a slight disappointment over my expensive dinner, the only other negative thing I can come up with is that I would personally prefer if the resort were a bit smaller in terms of number of guests. I stayed at another desert resort, which I'll be reviewing very soon, and that place felt much more personal due to its smaller size. But I loved absolutely everything else about this resort. Qasr al Sarab is definitely beautiful, magical, and one of a kind. The rooms are very nice, the grounds are beautiful, and the location is incredibly unique and cannot be beat in my opinion. All in all, it's an experience you can't get anywhere else, and that's hard to put a price tag on. This is also a good time to mention that, as always, this stay was not sponsored or discounted in any way, and nobody was informed that I was doing a review. If you enjoyed this tour and review of the Qasar Al Sarab Desert Resort, let me know in the comments. And if you've had a chance to visit yourself, I'd love to hear about your experience there. Also, if you enjoy content like this, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. It also really helps the channel. Until next time, happy travels.